What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel Critical Overload here. Since I'm about a few different topics in this video here again today, we'll be talking about Scream 6, we'll be talking about Megan 2, we'll be talking about Bo is Afraid, I believe is the title of the of that movie that's coming up and then we'll round it out by talking about glass which was the conclusion to the east rail 177 aka the unbreakable trilogy and a p twist that ultimately was scrapped because m night decided against it and i'll just share my thoughts on it really quick just to start off of course with scream six uh again scream six if you saw my overly long video t diving into a little bit further you can go watch that this is just a brief recap of that uh, but Scream 6 again has an early prediction to have like a 40 million dollar domestic debut This isn't something that's far-fetched or unreasonable considering Jenna Ortega's growing star power Horror was pretty successful last year So that's bringing interest to the genre overall which as a horror fan that should just make you Excited for the genre in general not just anything related to Scream but for the overall genre and Scream 5 itself was a solid success commercially and critically So there's no real profound reason for this to flop unless they squander the marketing opportunity that they have already started so we know with only two months left that we will see marketing pick up we'll see more steals we'll get first looks at people like kirby more shots of ghostface cast interviews the official trailer and so much more that will aid this in being a successful debut for ghostface in the big apple because i feel like what a lot of people are forgetting is that you don't really need to hype up a horror movie for three months or even two months you really realistically could build enough hype for this horror movie in one month marketing can go a long way depending on the tactics that you put in place for that one month one month can be enough to just secure a successful box office debut especially when it's related to an ip that already has an established fan base a fan base that is growing anxious to get any little breadcrumb they can get their hands on so if they were to spend all of february marketing scream six and that's all the marketing they do that would be enough that would be enough because we're going to do the rest of the work for them. So just to jump into Megan 2, Megan 2 is officially in the works or early development, I will say. Uh, this is according to Deadline, who reports that a sequel is already being planned, but we heard this even before Megan got released. So I'm going to dive into an even more exciting tidbit outside of just the fact that Megan 2 is in development. And that's really no shock to any of us because I think the movie made what, like 45 million worldwide for its opening weekend. So... What we have learned, another more interesting tidbit, is that Megan has an unrated version we could get in the near future, it seems, according to the screenwriter Akila Cooper. No shade to Universal, she says, love them, and I understand that once the trailer went viral, teenagers got involved and you want them to be able to see it, uh, she said when doing this interview with the Los Angeles Times. There should be an unrated version at some point. I heard it is on the books, but yes, it was way gorier. Her body count in the script was higher than in the movie. I hope we get that and it doesn't end up like that. Uh, what is it? The It Supercut of the first two movies from uh, Andrew Muschietti that I'm still waiting for and hoping we get one day. I hope we get to see a unrated version of Megan because like I mentioned in my review and I heard other people that have done reviews on this movie mention this as well. They are cutting away from the gore you might want to see. And it's not that the movie needs to rely on gore because it's building terror and keeping it to be an effective horror movie but through other means. Megan herself is a terrifying presence, but it's just when you're going to show us gore, when it goes into like some slasher territory, I want to see that stuff. I don't want to cut away from it. I do like how some kills do allow you to just kind of play around and they kind of play with your imagination, get you to wonder and think some, some of the kills are kind of make you, make you wince, but I wanted to see what, she, what she was doing. It's implied, and again, I like how they want to play with the viewer's imagination, but some of the stuff I was like, just show it to me, man. Let me see what she's doing. I came for Megan, and she's going on her rampage. Don't water down her rampage, but I get it. The PG-13 rating was definitely holding a lot of it back. Uh, Ari Aster is back with another movie. If you are a fan of Hereditary and Midsommar, then this should be something you might want to start getting excited about because the first trailer for Bo is Afraid dropped, not today, but uh, a couple days ago. I think it was yesterday, actually. And it looks like it will be another compelling character study. And with Joaquin Phoenix as the lead, that just added adds to my excitement uh he he himself is working on a sequel to one of the best character study moves we got in the last decade with the 2019 movie joker and he's currently working on joker too so i can't wait to see what he does in this upcoming film the synopsis goes as goes as this a paranoid man embarks on an epic odyssey to get home to his mother in this bold and ingeniously depraved new film from writer director ra astor so based off the trailer and the synopsis there seems to be a damaged relationship that's trying to be repaired which isn't shocking knowing what we have seen from 
from Astor's last two movies that also revolve around damaged relationships and broken families. I mean, hell, Midsommar is is his. I think that's him. His version of how his breakup went in real life. I think that's what he went on record to say about Midsommar. Midsommar was, yes, the worst breakup movie I've ever seen. In, in all honesty, the cast was amazing. Uh, but I can't wait to see what he does with this movie. You guys can let me know what you think about the trailer in the comments below. And if you are excited for the film, are you a fan of Ari Aster? Are you not a fan of Ari Aster? Um, the movie also, just to say this, I believe it's coming out in April. I don't have the exact date in front of me, but the movie, again, Bo is Afraid, is expected to drop in the month of April. The trailer definitely looks like it'll be a visual feast. Definitely looks like it'll be a, char a character study, so definitely a character-driven based movie and story that we'll get to follow. And with Joaquin Phoenix in the lead role, I don't see where you can go wrong. So we'll see what this movie has to offer to us when it releases again in April. Watch that trailer. Let me know what you guys think about it down in the comment section below when you get a chance to check it out last thing we're going to talk about is glass which came out like four years ago at this point going on four maybe five years even and m night Shyamalan, who has his latest film dropping next month titled knock at the cabin recently revealed to the hollywood reporter that his 2015 movie the visit almost became part of this east rail 177 trilogy but he ultimately decided against it now if you remember the visit you remember that's about the grandparents and these kids they go to visit their grandparents they find out that the grandparents aren't the real grandparents yada 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 but how this twist would have worked or been mentioned in glass is the grandparents from the visit would have been revealed to have escaped from the asylum that kevin elijah and david were confined to during the events of glass thus placing it in the same world and making it an unbreakable spinoff i guess you could say because split and glass are unbreakable sequels even though you could say split is more like a loose sequel so i would call the visit to be a spinoff if they would have done that i'm glad he didn't do this but you can let me know what you you would have thought about a twist like that down in the comment section below i personally just don't see a reason to tack something like that on and not really build from it or build build anything from that other than just like hey you know that's a cool little tidbit to know i didn't need to know it it does nothing it doesn't seem like it moves the needle forward in any way as it pertains to the story at hand with our three superheroes we're focusing on but would you have liked the visit to be connected to this east rail 177 trilogy why or why not let me know in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification that you never miss a video in the description i'll have links on my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there of course to let me know if there are any movies news or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video